We're Richard and Jackie and we are Early Retirement Wonderlust. Welcome to our three-part series on thinking of buying a camper van. In our first video we took you through some of the things we considered when we were buying our camper van. In the second video we showed you around our van and some of the choices that we made when we did convert it. And today we're going to go through the really exciting stuff of all the accessories that you can buy once you've got your camper van. When you first get your van it's so exciting there are so many different accessories out there for you to choose from i remember we went to the nec to one of the camper van shows and we spent a fortune on lots of different bits and pieces some of them have been amazing some of them we probably wouldn't have bought again and keeping with our philosophy of less is more over the five years we think we've parred it down to what we think are the essential things for us that makes life so much more enjoyable and so much more comfortable when traveling around in our camper van this is probably what we consider our most important accessory it's a thermal blackout windscreen protector um, when we put it on at night it is completely dark in the van so when we wake up in the morning um, we're not woken up at dawn at four in the morning it is also thermal so it keeps us really warm in the van in the winter but it also keeps the sun off the van in the summer so when we were in Croatia it was a godsend to keep the van cooler it's so easy to fit. These just fit over your door frame and there's Velcro that will attach it to your wing mirrors to keep it securely in place. The only thing we have found is that if you're in high wind situations, so when we were on the Outer Hebrides and the storms are coming in, they do blow over the top of the van occasionally. So if we know it's gonna be a really windy night, we have got internal blinds that we put on instead. They're really easy to fit, they just suction onto the windows, they keep the van nice and dark. They are, they do still offer quite a good thermal protection. They're not quite as efficient as the orange blind that we put on the front um, if it's not windy. Um, and we do get a little bit of condensation when we wake up in the mornings. But they are great in high winds and they've saved us quite a few times. For us, a priority was to get a decent bike rack to carry our bikes. We love our cycling and we tend to take our bikes wherever we go. We don't have a tow bar on our van, so there wasn't an option of having a tow bar bike rack. So we went for the standard VW, rather expensive bike rack. It's great because it loses the uh, the van feel and makes it a little bit more like a camper van. And it's really, really easy to use. It just pulls down, the bikes mount on this section. There are security grab handles there that are lockable. So the bikes are safe. We do use extra locks on the bike when we're traveling through Europe and we're parking up in cities. Um, and it's just really easy to transport bikes outside the van because as you probably realize, there's not much space inside a VW T6. We do travel quite extensively in our van and we go to Europe every year. When we went to Lake Garda, the temperature was about 40 degrees every day and we soon realised that one, the bugs can get in the van if you leave the doors open and two, if you close the doors, it's like being inside some sort of steam cooker um, and it was so hot. So when we came back that year, we did invest in these. They're secure window blinds that have got vents in them. Um, we just pop them into the windows at night when we uh, go to bed and it does let a breeze blow through the van if there is a breeze about. <laughs> we really enjoy cooking in our van and do it all the time. Not only does it save you money, it's actually we just really enjoy our evenings cooking together. So there's loads of accessories that we have. We keep these completely stocked in the van. We never move them so that the van is always ready to go and we're never leaving anything at home. In here, we have our pans. Okay, we always travel with a standard frying pan. And then these are genius. These are T-Fal. They have a removable handle. They work really, really well. Probably we could do with just two pans but they came as a set of three and we've always traveled with a set of three. In here we have the all-important safety box containing wine glasses. We're not massive believers in traveling with plastic glasses because you really got to drink wine out of glass glasses. 
we have a box where we keep all our knives and cutleries and everything else that you would need for cooking. We have mugs. We have a set of plastic bowls, plates, collapsible strainer, and the most awkward thing to get out, a wooden chopping board that always stays in the van. Just as a point of interest, as part of our bespoke building of the van, there was some worktop left, so my dad made this into a chopping board for us that travels everywhere we go. Storage of all our shopping has always been a bit of a dilemma for us and it's taken us quite a few years of practice to get a solution that works for us. Um, eventually we decided that we would buy a system of storage tubs. We have stackable ones, we've developed a system where we will have them stacked with our breakfasts in one box, all the dry produce like pasta and rice in another box and all our tins and things. We generally keep them pretty well stocked so that if we go away for a weekend we can literally have the van ready to go and we've got everything that we need to cook emergency meals. We also um, found in Europe last year a great system of keeping all our fruit and veg so that it doesn't go off because if you put them in sealed containers we found that they were going off quite quickly. So we bought one of these little shopping bags from Lidl and we found in a hardware store just a little meat hook that we put on here and it stops all the apples and potatoes rolling around while we're driving and keeps them nice and fresh. There are certain safety considerations when travelling in a camper van that you must adhere to and it was some of the first things that we bought and, and installed in the van in order to keep us safe. When you're cooking in a confined space and you've got tanks of LPG, you just want to make sure that you're safe when you're in the van. So we've got that covered with a number of things. The first thing is tucked away up there is our carbon monoxide detector and we test that regularly. Um, it just sits in the background and makes sure that we can sleep safely at night knowing that we're not going to get carbon monoxide poisoning. When we're cooking inside the van, we have a grabbable fire blanket just in case the worst would happen. We've never had to use it um, and that's just tucked away down the side. And we also purchased a fire extinguisher just tucked in the side of the van just in case the very worst would happen. Um, we've never felt the need to use any of this stuff but we've all seen horror stories on the internet of camper vans burning down. This is an amazing idea that we've pinched from a campsite that we stayed on in Switzerland. It is just a wooden duck board. We can just put it in front of the van and it keeps all of the mud out of the van. We just step on it. If it's really, really muddy, we sometimes put a coir matting on top of it just so we can wipe our feet. And we don't travel with carpets. We have done before now, but they just get trashed. So we literally have a bath mat that we put in there. Uh, every weekend when we get back, we can just shove it in the wash and start again. Those people that know me well will know that I have an absolute passion for fresh coffee. Some might say a little bit obsessive, but I think life is too short for poor coffee. So um, I was treated really well uh, as part of my retirement gifts from colleagues that knew me well, so that on our travels, every time we go away, I have a beautiful Snow Peak fresh coffee grinder. That means that I can get a fresh grind every morning. I carry with me at all times some coffee beans and our preferred way of making coffee at the moment is with a Snow Peaks dripper that just goes on top of the cup and you pop a filter paper in the top but we also have a trusty cafetiere we're now on our second cafetiere in five years having broken our first one strong memories of it but it makes uh, beautiful coffee and dead quick in the morning we use the van a lot we've stayed in it for nearly 600 nights and i love my home comforts we are lucky we travel just as a couple we haven't got to children with us so space isn't as much of an issue as it is for some people traveling in the VWT6s but we made the choice to use a proper duvet in the van and it makes such a difference it's like a little comfy home from home the other thing that we do have is a duvet mattress it's about three four inches thick and it just makes it like a proper bed from home a good night's sleep is really important, particularly if you're traveling for long times. The furthest we've traveled is for six weeks and wow, amazing. We recently traveled to the French Alps and stayed in the snow for two weeks and we just added a nice thick, um, almost sleeping bag-like lining blanket to the bed and we were toasty warm. 
people might not know that Jackie was born in South Africa, so it's quite apt that we love our barbecues and we love our brais. And we've also got a gas um, Kadak Safari Chef that comes from South Africa. I think it's a bit simple to say that it's a barbecue because it's a, a whole cooking system that's for use outdoors. We can use it as a hob, we can use it as a hot plate, a barbecue, we even have a pizza stone accessory. It hooks into the LPG at the back of the van. As purist barbecuers, we have a few views about whether it is true barbecue cooking on gas, but the convenience and the freedom to be able to do it on campsites where you're not allowed to have open fires is just a real godsend. We are so excited that it's coming into the summer months and we can actually start living outside of the van again. Something that we've had to purchase several of over the years is fold away chairs. They are not made to last, but we did invest in some slightly more expensive ones this time. Uh, we've had them for two seasons, which is longer than any of the others. Uh, light and compact because obviously the T6 does not have a lot of storage and amazing just to use in the summer to take on picnics. We can carry them with us. Just as Jackie mentioned about camping chairs, it's fair to say we've got through our fair share of fire pits and we've gone from fold up barbecue type ones that we bought from Aldi that were great and lasted a number of seasons. We then used uh, lightweight meshing ones, which are quite cheap from Amazon, which again, we absolutely loved. As part of um, my retirement gift from school, they knew Jackie and myself well, and they knew that uh, we would use a fire pit so they invested in a snow peak fire pit that we absolutely love and we use it all the time and it is just so hoogie when you're sitting outside the van chilling and relaxing. An accessory that we've used more than we thought we would is our water shower. We travel quite a lot where we were in the middle of nowhere and sometimes after a really nice long walk it's amazing to boil a kettle of water, fill it up and just have a quick warm shower. I'm going to try and do a bit of a catch-all now of the other little bits and bobs that are essential but can't really talk about them that much because they are so little but absolutely essential. So the first thing is if you've got electric hookup you need an electric hookup cable to link the van to the power supply. We went for a 25 meter cable and we have had to use that much um, on various sites around the UK and in Europe. When you're traveling in Europe as well it's always handy to have electric hookup converters so that you can um, plug your electric hookup into a variety of different sockets. We've got an onboard water tank and we have a way of filling it. We use a water container and a funnel. It's really simple and it means that if we needed to buy water at the supermarket we could just use the funnel to fill the tank. We don't do any washing up in the van sink so we have a separate collapsible washing up bowl. It's very old, it's very battered, it's very well used. We've used it for over 600 nights and it's still going strong. And then the final thing is if you're traveling to Europe and you have LPG, if you need to top up the European LPG points are very, very different to the UK ones. So you need a LPG adapter to fill your gas tanks up. The list of accessories that you could have for your van is absolutely endless. We haven't included everything, just the things that we really think that we use all of the time. Be aware that the marketeers out there will try and sell you anything to do with your van. And as Jackie says, the list is endless, but you've got to make decisions that are right for you. And we've, pared down our list over the course of the last five years. So that's it, that was part three of um, our thinking of buying a VW camper van and hope you found it useful. See you later. Bye.